Hello everyone, it's Rebecca from the Glitch Stitchery here with the next Longway Homestead Read Study. So I already knew what this one was going to be because they sent out an email about it. And it's Targi, which I have spun on the channel before. One of my earlier video, I don't, I don't think it was a set, I think it was only one or two videos, was about processing a Targi lamb's fleece. And then I've also spun a lot of Targi blended with silk and bamboo. I still have quite a lot of that to spin, so you'll still see more of it. And I think actually the pink spin that I'm working on right now has at least one bobbin of Targi involved in addition. <laughs> I spin it a lot. It's one of my favorite breeds, but we got it from Long Way Homestead this time. And the email was because it is a higher amount of VM than they normally have in their, in their roving. And we will talk about that more further on in the video, but right now I'm just going to read the little card. So, breed of the month, Targi. Targi sheep are named after the national forest station that housed the USDA sheep experiment where the breed was developed. They took Rambouillet rams and bred them with Corydale and Lincoln Rambouillet cross ewes. The goal being to develop a hardy dual purpose sheep that would thrive on range and farms in the west and high plains. This explains why Targi sheep are so popular in Montana, Saskatchewan, Idaho, and Alberta. They spelled Montana wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not important, I just noticed it. So you can see a picture here. And Targi really is one of my favorite breeds. They're just a really good all-around wool to work with. So if you look at the back of the card, it says Targi wool is very soft with a lot of loft and good elasticity. I do agree with that. The yarn tends to be very bouncy, which is great. It's very fun to work with. Um, it will felt, it takes dye very well with a matte surface. Wool is always white. That part, that last part is true more like 99% of the time because the lamb fleece was gray. Um, I think a lot of the flocks in the United States, they're not necessarily 100% targy all the time. Sometimes they raise other breeds at the same time. There can be a little bit of crossover. So sometimes you do end up with mostly targy sheep. They have just a tiny bit something else and then they're not white. So um, so I have seen gray targy. It's not 100% white, just usually. All right, so good for next to skin. I agree with that. Um, average staple length, three to five inches. Fiber diameter, 22 to 25 microns. Fleece weight, 10 to 14 pounds, which is why I buy lambs fleeces because they're much smaller. 10 to 14 pounds is a lot for me to process. And then dense uniform mat locks with lots of crimp. That's true, they're like a blocky, like most other merino looking breeds. All right, let's cut this open and see what we're dealing with. Now I can already see my scissors fell. There we go. I can already see the VM through the plastic and I'm sure you can see it as well. And it's just hay. I mean, it's nothing. Oh, this stuff's really soft. So as I draft, a lot of the hay is going to fall out. And then as I apply, more of it will fall out. And then when I have the finished yarn, if you take the skein in your hands and you stretch it out, you kind of snap it back a couple times, even more hay will fall out. So uh, most of it will be taken care of by those three steps. My suggestion would be to do all those three steps before you wash or dye it though, because once you add water into the mix, it's much harder to get the VM out. So I'm gonna spin it, apply it, snap it back to remove some of the VM, and then dye it. That should be enough and Oh, this will make a wonderful hat. I'm so excited. I'm gonna get started and I will see you back here in a moment.
So before I take the time to dye it, I wanted to show you how the Targi came out. And it, I unfortunately cannot show you through the camera how incredibly soft it is. It's amazing. <laughs> but I spun it pretty thick and thin and artsy. I was trying to take the VM out as much as I could while spinning. There's still quite a bit in here, but nothing like massively huge. And it will make an incredible hat. So I'm thinking teal or turquoise. I'm not sure which. On the other hand, if I did turquoise plus a tiny bit of green and did a really low saturation, I could maybe get mint but I haven't actually tested that and I don't want to screw it up. So probably just going to go with turquoise and dip dye. Um, and you will see that in a moment. I just have to go set up the dye pot. So be right back. If you like my work and would like to see more, please follow the links in the description below to my Instagram and blog, or show your support by buying me a coffee. Most of all, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.